for those of you who have been here for the longest period of time, you already know when we talk about pancreatitis, any word that ends with ITIS, 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 arthritis, pneumonitis, pancreatitis, tis, 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 or itis, we mean inflammation. And we said inflammation is actually four things the cardinal signs of inflammation, swelling, redness, increase in temperature. And what else? Those of you who have always been here, the four signs of inflammation, apart from redness, Apart from swelling, apart from uh, an increase in temperature, pain. So yeah, those are the four signs of inflammation. So when somebody mentions inflammation to you, simply know they are talking about those four signs. So when I say the pancreas is inflamed, I mean these four signs are actually evident in the pancreas. So your pancreas is actually struggling and straining. So yes, what is pancreatitis? An inflamed pancreas. But what is the pancreas? We cannot even start talking about an inflamed organ without even understanding the organ, without even understanding the functions of this organ. Okay? We have to understand the anatomy and then the physiology. But anatomy side, I'm always skeptical about it because I know uh, that if I go deeper into anatomy, most of you will run. <laughs> you will run and go and sit on a gossip channel. So now, uh, I simply do the physiology part so that you can understand the functions of that organ. After I've done the physiology part, when you see the physiology, which means the functions of that organ, when you understand that and you see it, it becomes easier for me to tell you where it is inflamed, where the problem comes in, and how to actually reverse this. And now you recover from the uh, complications of that uh, troublesome organ. So pancreatitis is an inflamed organ, uh, which is the pancreas, and the pancreas is part of the digestive system. When you say fix the gut, this is part of it. The liver is part of the gut. So anytime I tell you to fix the gut, these are the things, the organs that I'm actually targeting. So because they play a very important role in digestion uh, and, and other, uh, other functions, and you'll see how the pancreas is very important here. Now, that pancreas looks like a leaf, okay? Just be, in, in the duodenum there, where, just below the stomach, we have the duodenum that curves the, the C-shaped uh, small organ there before you join the small intestines. There is where the pancreas is, and it drains all its juices and enzymes into the duodenum. Now, why is it draining this into the duodenum? Because we are putting this here to digest what is coming from the stomach. We are also putting them here to actually neutralize the acidic pH that is coming from the stomach. Because remember, enzymes that work in the small intestines, they work optimally under an alkaline pH. Now, scam number one, you've been told... Oh, you take alkaline diet so that your body maintains an alkaline pH. I am never an advocate of that, and the, re the reason is this. If you take alkaline diets, let's say the fruits that you've been told, and the vegetables, and you're aiming to alkalize blood, you're wasting time, because this food will encounter an acidic pH in the stomach. Therefore, they are not <laughs> alkaline anymore. They react with the acid, they are neutralized. They move into the small intestine with some of the acids, and now the pancreas brings in the bicarbonates to neutralize more of the acid. Now they're not even acidic anymore. They become again alkaline. So by the time you're absorbing them, it's a different thing. So if somebody tells you, eat this so that you can make your blood alkaline, ask them, what is the function of the kidneys? Because the kidneys are the ones that actually maintain acid-based balance. So there's no way you can go into alkalinity when you have a functional kidney. It will bring you back. There's no way you can go into acidity if you have a functional kidney. It will bring you back. That state has to be maintained. So it's a waste of time you telling me, oh, you know, I am an advocate of alkaline diets. You're wasting time. Your body has knows what to do. Another uh, another question, ask them, what is the function of, the, of your lungs, apart from breathing? Kidneys and the lungs both maintain the acid-based balance. So there's no way, just because you ate a fruit, you'll end up having the same fruit in your bloodstream. Sometimes, let's use common sense. It's easier that way because... When you start opening up your common sense and not allowing people to think for you, you simply question them and you see how they run. They'll run around it and still defend the same thing. You've seen how uh, that gentleman, who, what was his name again? There's this guy who keeps on advocating for new cars and all that. Remember him? The guy we, who came here twice and he kept on... Uh, I'll remember him, his name and I'll tell you. So yeah, so do not buy that lie. So this pancreas regulates uh, the pH of the small intestines by releasing bicarbonates in there. In the small intestines. However, I want you to know that that pancreas is divided into two. We have the tail, the body and the tail, and then we have the head. So the head is the one that attaches to the small intestine, and the tail is the one that spreads uh, on the other side, okay? And it is by design. So we have that pancreas divided into two. We have the endocrine part, which is the tail part, and the exocrine part, which is the head. That is why you should take it serious. Say hello, thank you. So we have the exocrine, E-X-O, exocrine. 
and then we have the endocrine so the exocrine is the one that actually is in the head the head is the exocrine part the tail is the endocrine part when you hear the word endocrine the first thing that you go through your head is hormones hormones anytime somebody tells you endocrinology i am your endocrinologist simply know this is somebody who was specialized in studying hormones so let it go that way the tail is the one that actually produces the hormones and the head which is the exocrine exocrine means you are secreting something and then you're sending it all the way through ducts so there must be tubes small tubes that carry what you're secreting you have a factory that is making something and then for you to carry this substance from this factory to where it's needed you'll have to use pipes like the kenya pipeline okay so this side that is called the exocrine is the one that has ducts remember the endocrine part that produces hormones does not need the duct does not need the tubes it only needs to produce the hormones and then these hormones are pumped into the bloodstream directly for example you don't need to carry insulin through a tube to go and open up the cells so that sugar flows from blood into the cells no you simply need to produce this insulin and pump it into the bloodstream so the endocrine part of the pancreas does not have ducts but the exocrine and this is for the medical students and the pharmacy students all these students in the medical school you'll be asked what is the difference between the endocrine system and the exocrine system so simply understand the exocrine has to secrete uh, its enzymes and digestive juices and then they have to be carried to the small intestines through tubes that are called ducts on the other hand the endocrine part secretes hormone and they diffuse into the bloodstream and they go and do what they have to do okay and that's what you need to understand now since we have the endocrine and the exocrine and we've said the endocrine produces hormones which hormones are produced by the endocrine one insulin and what is the function of insulin insulin is the hormone that you produce when you're eating so every time you eat you spike blood sugars you produce insulin insulin comes opens up the cells so that glucose flows from blood into the cells and that lowers blood sugar levels so insulin is a hormone that is actually produced when you're constantly eating so every time you eat you spike insulin every time you eat you spike insulin is the same as paracrine now paracrine is you have two cells and these two cells are similar let's say the epithelial cells and then this one cell is producing a, a hormone or a substance to go and act on this other cell which is the same so it's like just the same we name the same the, the way the name says paracrine parallel same same uh, cells but one produces a hormone or a substance that actually affects the activity of this other one but they are the same one they are the same cells the same type of cells so do not confuse that okay yeah understand that now so we are producing insulin when we are eating so that it brings down blood sugars because if these blood sugars continue going up they'll bring a lot of problems okay they'll actually make sure that your organs start failing you start having bad vision you start losing memory you start having kidney failure heart disease and all these bad conditions including a fatty liver so therefore we have to bring down the blood sugars and that's when the pancreas produces insulin to lower the blood sugars that is clear i've done that over and over again on the other hand we have or not on the other hand on the same same side the endocrine side we have hormone number two it is called glucagon so pancreas produces insulin to lower blood sugars when you're eating now another person is fasting they are not eating so there's no energy in form of glucose coming in now the body is starving so the body decides let me find any dump site here let me go to the stores and use what i stored for this rainy period so what does it do it turns to the fats starts to burn them down which we call lipolysis lipo means lipids lipids are fats lysis means breakdown so lipolysis breaking down the lipids so it turns into the fat cells break down the fat cells to give you glucose and now remember lipolysis is breaking down fat right and then when you're breaking down fat to get glucose that is gluconeogenesis gluco for glucose neo for new sources that are not carbohydrates and this is fat right so we are getting glucose from the fats so that is gluconeogenesis genesis means generating so you're generating glucose from sources that are not carbohydrates this is why i tell you that you being told that carbohydrates are energy giving fats uh, energy giving foods is a fallacy because you can simply turn to the fats to break them down to get glucose to maintain your blood sugar levels but most importantly the good amount of this fat will be broken down to give you ketone bodies that will actually serve as the best energy sources for your brain for your nerves and your general cells 
But the beauty about that is cancer cells do not know how to utilize ketone bodies. But your body cells know how to utilize ketone bodies. Therefore, if you're burning fat to get ketone bodies, instead of burning carbohydrates to get glucose, you're actually to get high ketones in the body. And these ketones, they will actually kill cancer cells because they are anti-inflammatory, that is one. And number two, the cancer cells don't know how to utilize them. So they will be stopped from multiplying because they don't have the energy. But somebody who has cancer and you constantly consume carbohydrates, you're actually feeding the cancer cells. You see that? So yes, fasting this is how people start surviving from cancer when they are fasting. Because you're denying those rapidly multiplying cells energy, which is glucose. And 95% of energy for the cancer cells is glucose. So therefore, carbohydrates are criminal in somebody who has cancer. But what do they tell you? They tell you to avoid red meat, but continue eating the carbohydrates. Only that you have to change the color. Eat the brown ones. But stop eating red meat. But you see, red meat does not give you the ketone bodies that will actually prevent you. <laughs> no, red meat does not give you the glucose unless you're eating lean meat. Because when you eat lean meat, you end up overeating it. Excess of those amino acids will be converted to glucose and that will feed the cancer cells. Most importantly, red meat has never been a problem. The problem has always been the processed red meat. So imagine you avoiding to eat red meat from the butcher man, but the same same people still supplying you with sausages and smokies. Imagine that. And nobody says anything about sausages and smokies, but these are coming with MSG that actually feeds the cancer cells and induces more mutations. You see that? Yes, so now we, we are not eating, so we don't produce insulin. So insulin goes down. When insulin goes down, the opposite happens. You produce that glucagon in the same uh, pancreas. So imagine the pancreas regulates both high blood glucose and low blood glucose. So when you produce glucagon, glucagon goes to the liver and instructs the liver to burn the fat cells to produce ketone bodies and a little glucose to just maintain the glucose levels in your blood. That is amazing. Therefore, when you're fasting, the pancreas is busy producing glucagon. When you're eating, the pancreas is busy producing insulin. We are good to go. Once you understand that, ah, we have a pancreas, muko pamoja. Now, there is another hormone produced by the pancreas that is called somatostatin. Somatostatin. Somatostatin is a hormone that is actually a universal inhibitor. When we were talking about uh, ABO blood groups, we talked about a universal donor and a universal recipient. Also, in production and inhibition of hormones that are produced all the way in the gut, including acid secretion, we have a hormone that actually stops or blocks the excessive production of these hormones. That hormone is produced by that pancreas, and that hormone is called somatostatin. Now listen, if you have a defective pancreas, you can already see, you start overproduction of the acid, you start having overproduction of bicarbonates, you start having overproduction of insulin, sometimes overproduction of glucagon. So all these hormones that are actually being produced in the gut, they are stopped by somatostatin. So therefore that is a very, very important hormone because it actually acts as a negative feedback. When you have excess of them, we block the production. Perfect one. But you'll see, there are people who have gastric ulcer, not ulcers, gastric uh, tumors, they have colon tumors, and, and even pancreatic tumors that are actually producing these hormones every time and in higher levels. They are given a drug that is called ocreotide. Anybody here who has used that drug called ocreotide? Ocreotide is a drug that is a synthetic analog of somatostatin. Synthetic analog. Synthetic means it's made in the lab. It is not a, a natural a hormone. So it's a tablet. So it's a synthetic analog. It mimics somatostatin. So it does what somatostatin does. And the beauty about somatostatin, the natural one, actually stops you from overeating food. Imagine that. So after you've eaten food, this is the hormone that actually instructs the gut, hey, please, it, we are full. We cannot eat anymore. So if you have a deficiency of this hormone, guess what will happen? <laughs> People will think you're a glutton. Yeah? People will think you're a glutton. You'll be eating all the time. So sometimes you're eating so much and people are wondering, why are you eating all this food? Why is this guy so slim and he eats all this food? It's because maybe a deficiency of somatostatin in the gut. So this is the satiety hormone. Blocks you from eating anymore, suppresses your hunger. So we actually need this. And I'm not saying that if you want to lose weight, you go and take some, uh, the ocreotide. I'm not saying that. Yeah? <laughs> so because there are people who love quick fix. 
Hmm? If you're not, you're not taking Ozempic, you're going for a bariatric surgery. If you're not going for that, it's a gastric balloon. If you're not doing that now, because Dr. Lewis has said Ocrotide suppresses appetite, you'll be tomorrow in the pharmacy. Do you have Ocrotide? <laughs> eh? Let the hormones do their work naturally. <laughs> okay? Good. On this other side, where we, are, we said exocrine, that was endocrine, okay? So the exocrine part, on this exocrine part, where we are producing uh, the enzymes, and these enzymes are carried through ducts to be uh, deposited in the small intestines, you know very well, this side will produce all enzymes that actually digest literally every food, which means the pancreas is the only organ Underline only, the only organ that can carry out digestion from A to Z on its own. Why would we not protect that organ? Why? Tell me why.